Apex Legends has a lot of POIs. And by a lot, I mean a lot. And there is really no limit to the amount of variety we have seen in these locations. Take Fragment, everyone's favorite place to hot drop in. Hey, hey, get off the zip line! Or Fight Night, where you can brawl against anybody with only your fists. I don't have any fists. But for all the great POIs in Apex, there are some that aren't favorites for everybody. Some people may not like Lava Fisher for its, well... Hey, I can stand on this lava! Oh God, it burns! Others may not like Bunker for obvious reasons, but I believe there is only one POI in the game that has been disliked by everybody who has landed their boots onto it. I said disliked, not hated, get that out of here. It's a seemingly innocent place, off in the far distance of World's Edge that some casual players have probably never been to. A place that's been there since the very beginning, and yet has remained overshadowed by others around it. If you've heard me yap about maps before, you already know what I'm about to talk about. But for those of you coming in for the first time, please sit down, relax, and have a drink. Allow me to welcome you to Dome, and explain why Dome sucks. Let's first define what Dome exactly is. Dome is a POI, or point of interest. Every map in Apex, or really any game, has locations that you are drawn to as landmark locations. Think of how the shrines in Breath of the Wild stand out against the lush green fields, or New Vegas' big ass dinosaur. Bye. They are locations that stand out against the rest of the play space. And the giant cracked eggshell of Dome offers an enticing place to explore and fight in. Dome is also considered a town POI a location with large enough space and loot for it to be its own landing location for a team. This may seem like an arbitrary distinction, but it's important for things like Comp Apex, where landing spots are chosen before the start of a match. You're gonna prefer choosing an entire town for yourself rather than splitting a town or taking a regular POI. <laughs> Understanding the category Dome is in is important as we discuss its failings. And you'll soon see why these failings are so important. We'll showcase them by describing the values that make a town POI good or bad. And we can quantify that by deciding whether a town has taken one of the three L's. Loot quality, location, leaving the town. If you are missing out on any one of these, you take an L. And Dome is unfortunate enough to not have one, but two, but three L's in its possession. Let me show you why by first showing you loot quality. Loot quality is defined by three different values. One is the amount of loot in a town, second is the time it takes to loot, and the other value is the tier of loot you can find in that town. And one thing that Dome doesn't actually suffer from is its tier of loot. Dome's entire POI is marked in Apex as a high tier loot location, which means you are more likely to find higher tier attachments, equipment, and healing items in the POI. And Dome actually doesn't suffer from loot times taking too long either. The small size of the POI makes it a relatively quick place for three players to clear out in a short amount of time. So far so good, what's the actual problem then with Dome's loot quality? Oh yeah, there's a third one. There are two places where you can grab loot on a map in Apex, those being tarps and bins, each having anywhere from one to four items for you to pick up. Dome in its entirety includes 83 total tarp spawns, 93 if you want to include the trucks outside the town as well as 13 bins to open too. That may not seem too bad, but let's go next door to the POI closest to Dome, Launch Site, which features a grand total of 143. Oh, and 17 bins too. Dome's largest loot problem is not the tier or speed of the loot, just that there isn't that much of it. Your average squad leaving Dome will have decent attachments and equipment, but lacking in healing items and ammo. Your gun may be fantastic, but it doesn't really matter much when you can't shoot it for long or heal the damage you take, which unfortunately grants Dome its first L. But hey, hey, maybe I'm being a bit unfair to Dome. Surely there are other towns with small amounts of loot to work with. And in fact, there is. Take Harvester, which features only 72 tarp spawns throughout the entire POI. Ignore the 22 bins. 
That arguably sounds worse than Dome in a way, right? Surely that means the loot isn't as bad as it seems? This is a rhetorical question I am using to lead into the next topic in case you couldn't tell. The reason Harvester doesn't suffer from the same loot problems as Dome is thanks to the second L we must discuss. Location. A POI's placement on a map determines a lot on what you can do from it. It decides what final rings you have priority to, what positions on the map are good to play from, and what playstyles can thrive from playing from it. So it's important for a town POI to be able to fit its location. Let's move across World's Edge to Overlook, which sits on the middle eastern section of the map. The loot quality is roughly the same to Dome, but its centered location on the open side of World's Edge offers it a variety of rotation options and priority to a lot of different end zones. Thanks to this, Overlook tends to be a favored POI for teams looking to play zone and rotate quickly. The quality of its loot matches its placement on the map, and makes a good POI for that location. Let's compare that to Dome, which has very similar looting times and loot quality and see where it sits on the map. Having to go pretty far here. Mom, are we there yet? Ah, here we are. See the problem? You can offset poor loot quality with a good center location on the map that allows you to get into final rings easily. But Dome? It sits at one of the farthest points on the entire map, where if a ring were to say, end at Skyhook, You'd have to travel twice the distance than that of Overlook or Harvester to make it into the ring. And by the time you get there, most of the good spots will already be filled up, meaning you have to fight to make any ground. But with your poor loot quality to begin with, you'll have to spend more time building up your shields and supplies to fight against them. Dome does have priority to some end zones, but they are so few in comparison to its peers that it's downright laughable. And it is the reason that Dome takes its second L. So the loot quality is an L, the location is an L, but surely players can still work with it, right? I mean, we just said so earlier that you can play the edge and gather up Evo and supplies regardless. And a good fighting team can overcome that deficit with smart decision making and team fights. Sure, that's all well and true. And we have even seen it happen in live games. But Dome has not one L, it has not two Ls but rather it has three. And that final L is the biggest L of them all. Leaving the POI. You see, location is an important part of a town, but what also is important is what POIs surround a town. You can have a solid center location with good loot, but that hardly matters if you have to go through four different POIs to get into the ring. <laughs> when you walk out of your landing spot, what options do you have to go forward? Let's look at the surroundings around Dome and find out what we have. There are a total of two POIs that act as obstacles and one lane. Wait, seriously, one lane? What is this, a medieval street? This is America, we need eight lanes minimum. Say the zone is ending on the north side of Lava Siphon, an area that Dome is relatively close to. When a team landing at Dome leaves to get into their zone, here are their options. The first two we see are pretty questionable. You have to push through either Stacks and Big Mod or Launch Site to move into Lava Siphon, both of which could have a team landing at them. Having to move through a POI isn't the end of the world. It's inevitable in some places, but what's important is whether or not the team ahead of you will start moving before you do. Both Stacks and Launch Site are larger POIs than Dome, with far more loot to grab before rotating. So by the time the Dome team is done looting and ready to rotate, the other teams at these POIs are still finishing their lap up of loot. If you want to rotate quickly, then you're just out of luck because moving too early into these towns could result in a confrontation. But I can hear that rank grinder in the comments saying, why not just fight? Knowing there will be a team likely still in the POI means three possible kill points. That sounds like a good deal, right? Well, then you're risking the chance of ruining a possible rotation by getting into a 3v3, which means you'll be gatekept getting into the ring later ruining any chance for placement points. That is, of course, assuming you can win a straight 3v3 against a team that will be better looted than you, and that nobody will come looking for the third party. So moving through POIs maybe isn't the ideal choice? What about the lane? This lane connects Dome all the way to Geyser. Looks like it could be pretty useful for a Dome team. Let's get in the game and see what it really looks like. You're looking a little lonely there. 
Mind if my squad joins in? Yep, it's all low ground. Sure, you have a geyser to make it a bit faster to move through, but what are your options from that? Well, you can go into Lava Siphon directly, who could also still be having a team in it. See previous point. Or you could rush straight through the low ground, but you better hope the big mod and stacks team doesn't look down at you from the bridge. Don't take too long deciding though. If you take too long figuring out your path from this wide open hill, the launch site team may get a little hungry. Do you see the problem? To get out of dome, you have to play a very delicate dance of moving around four different POIs, snaking your way past them with every tool available to you to have any chance of a good rotation. Either that or you have to forego any possible good rotations to play the edge and fight teams for your points. Teams that are more likely doing better than you to begin with. Hell, I didn't even mention the jump tower because anytime you use it, you're rolling the dice on whether the launch site team is paying attention. Dome takes a gigantic L, not because it's got terrible loot quality, not because it's the literal naughty corner of the map, but because your chances of doing anything from this POI are absolute dog cheeks. It sucks. Hey, uh, I, I kind of like Dome. What? How? How? Af after everything I talked about, how could you still like Dome? Well, um, none of those things really affect me in pubs. And I, I really like fighting there. Huh. Yeah. The thing about judging any POI in Apex Legends is that the greater parts of what makes them good or bad are largely not important to a majority of the player base. If you don't play competitively or are past the metal ranks, everything I talked about really won't affect you. There's never a guarantee that teams will land around you and you really don't need perfect rotation in regular games either. What really matters is whether a POI is fun to play. And honestly, Domi is pretty fun. With the eggshell separating the outside action from the inside, the massive center platform separating the buildings, and the buildings themselves having multiple layers to move around in, it makes for a pretty fun place to fight at. And I'd be a liar if I said I didn't enjoy a good dome endgame. So, yeah. Dome as a POI isn't the worst thing ever. If you enjoy dome, that's fair. It certainly has its good qualities. Man, at least there isn't any other POI in the game that has the exact same qualities as Dome, but somehow is significantly worse. Oh, fuck. <laughs>